and in that network, one of the one of the the foundation stones of that is an understanding of what he terms the core operating in the courts of heaven, which is the name of his book. And for most of us, that's pretty new revelation. It, it's, we know, we can read the scripture over and over that there are at least 60, and I think it's closer to 100 places where God is either called the righteous judge, the just judge, he's a God of justice. All of these things are part of who God is. And we understood that from the scripture. We know he's righteous, we know he's just, but we never knew really how to access that. And Robert put language to what people have been doing throughout the world, in some cases for 20 years, and they've communicated with him. So when he came in last week, he began to talk about what it means to operate in the courts of heaven. And he, his premise was, and I'm just reviewing because that's what teachers do, that there are three ways that we can pray. Remember, we can pray to God as Father, that's for our personal needs. We can pray to God as friend. That's for the needs of others. But then we can pray to God as just judge. And that's when there are, there are, there are things on the earth, unrighteousness. There are things going on that are not right. See, I don't know about you, but I think we're all the same. We know what the Word of God says about the blessings. And we see it from cover to cover, the blessings of the Lord. And yet we also know that there seems to be a disconnect between what the Word of God says about blessings and the reality of many people's lives. And we couldn't get it. We, we're like, why, when we know the Word of God, maybe I didn't pray enough, maybe I didn't fast enough, maybe I didn't confess the Word enough. All of those things that are religious things, and they're good and right, and yet we go... 10, 15, 20 years or never to see the full manifestations of the blessing that we know is in this word. Is this making sense? And so one of the revelations that came out of, that God used Robert to, and is really springboarding him into a global ministry, is the idea that if there, it says in Revelation 12, there is an accuser of the brethren, and this is kind of foundational, but it's good to review because God is calling us to a new place with some of this so that we can be, we can go into the courts for others. So God, <coughs> there is an accuser of the brethren. That accuser accuses day and night. And because there are two parts that we have to understand, God is a loving Heavenly Father who wants to totally bless His kids. Yeah. He wants to totally bless us because that's His nature, just like a good parent wants to bless their kids. However, He is also perfectly, perfectly, beyond what we can understand, just and righteous. So if the accuser of the brethren comes to the righteous judge and says, you can't bless them because of this, perhaps it's a sin, perhaps it's an iniquity in the bloodlines, things perhaps that we didn't even understand were there, the righteous judge, because of his perfect, pure justice and righteousness, has to withhold that blessing because the accusation is valid. That's the premise for, for what we're talking about. However, when we go into the courts and we enter into that place and we begin to repent, do our part, there's two parts. There's the, the our part and the God part. When we begin to repent for those things that the accuser of the brethren can use to accuse us, we repent we put it under the blood of the Lamb, which answers every accusation, then the accusation is finished. In Swahili, you used to say quisha, quisha manera, very finished. Then the, the accuser of the brethren has no right to accuse, and then the blessing, the Father's heart to bless, can then begin to flow. Is that making sense? 
That's the backstory to this. And Robert has example after example, both in his book but in real life, of these things that have been taking place throughout the world as people have had this revelation or have gotten this revelation. The other thing he bases it on is in Luke 18, which is the parable, the unrighteous judge. And at the end of that, we know the widow comes and the widow says, give me justice, give me justice. And, and the judge after a while says, this lady's gonna wear me out, I'm gonna give her justice. At the end of that, that parable, that story, the scripture says, will not God bring forth his answer for his elect speedily who cry out for him day and night? Now, I know some of our situations here. I know that there are things that we prayed over for 10, 15, 20 years and seen no movement. And our religious background has said, well, there's a timing in God, which there is. There's a religious, the, our religious background says you have to pray a, a certain amount to fill up the bowls of heaven. I remember that, anybody remember that? And then when the bowls are filled up, then you have to tip, and then God will answer. So many different things. But sometimes the reason why the answer isn't coming is because the accuser of the brethren can accuse us and, and cause the Father who wants to bless to withhold that blessing. And so that's kind of where we're, we're starting. So we wanted to continue that today and just call it the process of being right. And we want to talk, first of all, about the nature of rep repentance a little bit. Because as we go into the courts, and maybe we've been in the courts now at least eight to ten times, with people or over other issues and so on, we find out, as I said, there's this two-step process. There's our side and there's God's side. And so to try to illustrate the process, the first part of that, which is the process of repentance, we can look at the story of the prodigal son, which most of us know, okay, the story of the, the, the son who, the younger son, went to his father, said, give me my inheritance. He took the inheritance, headed off, and used it, and I think in King James it said riotous living. He, he, he basically blew it. Blew all the cash, blew all the money, ended up living for a farmer, taking care of pigs to try to get, make a living and longing, it says, to even fill his belly with the, with the husks of the corn that he was feeding the pigs. And that's where we pick up the story. It says, but when he came to his senses, he said, the nature of biblical repentance is, the first step is a change of revelation, a change of understanding that takes place. It's a change of heart that starts with our, our mind, it goes into our attitudes, it goes into our emotions. Biblical repentance used to be, in our minds, just, I feel sorry for my sins. And that's so not true, okay? It's so much more than that. So the son came to his senses. All of a sudden, he had a revelation, an aha moment. And he says, how many of my fa father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here for hunger? I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So there is an aha moment of where he came to his senses and it's not that he was so necessarily as sorry for his sins, but he turned to the Father. That's the nature of repentance. The nature of biblical repentance is not so much, I'm sorry for my sins, I'm screwed up, and that's all part of it, but it's much more a turning to the Father. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he got up and came to his father. Now this is the attitude of father. 
when we repent, when we turn to him, the attitude of the father is this, and he was still a long way off, his father saw him, felt compassion for him. Our father is big on compassion. He loves to bless his kids just like you and I love to bless ours. His father saw him, felt compassion for him, ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son then goes on to say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Make me as one of your hired men. And we know the rest of the story. The father throws a feast. He puts on a robe. He puts on a ring. He treat, and fully embraces him back as son. That's what happens when we undergo biblical repentance. So the role of repentance in the process of the courts, what we're finding is repentance is a change of heart, which includes minds, attitudes, will, which results in a conscious turning to God. If we could get rid of, and again, I don't know about you, but my background stuff was repentance was, I'm sorry for my sin, I'm sorry for my sin, and there's a part to that. But when I looked up the word, the Greek word is metanoia. Metanoia actually means much more this. I'm turning to God. And when I'm turning to God, it's a conscious decision of my mind, of my heart. I'm turning to Him. And as I turn to Him, guess what? This stuff behind me falls off. Because God's grace comes alongside to empower that stuff. This is good news. What we're finding out as we go with people into the courts is that as the Spirit of God begins to move, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is the Spirit of truth, so we can trust Him to bring forth absolute truth. Remember, there's a difference between absolute truth and our perception of truth. That's key, because our perception of truth it may not be the same as absolute truth. So our perception of truth might be, well, all right, here I'm going to go where angels fear to tread. It's okay to, it's okay to live with someone as long as I'm really in love. My perception of truth is not the same as the covenant of marriage. Shoo, got quiet. <laughs> but that's, that's the difference, perception of truth. So Holy Spirit is the spirit of absolute truth. Holy Spirit is our advocate. He's the one who leads us as we go into the courts of heaven. He begins to reveal things and so on. So as we go into the courts, our heart has to be ready, and, and the, our side of it is repentance. The parameters of repentance, this is just a couple of them, but we have to know that the first and foremost, that all sin results first and foremost from some kind of wrong attitude toward the things of God. It starts with attitude. It starts with a matter of the heart. And then sin is turning away in some attitude, turning away. Corrupt attitudes toward God, of course, result in ingratitude, unfaithfulness, disobedience, you know, all the sin stuff. But repentance turns us back to that earlier place of that better relationship with God. We align with Him. Biblical repentance is radical. It's an unconditioned, it's not like I'm going to put a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound so I can go out and do it again. Everybody gets that. The results aligns us back with the nature and character of God. It then allows Him to be our loving Father in the area that we have prodigaled. I made up a word. <laughs> that we have prodigaled away from Him. So when we go into the courts of heaven, and we begin to seek God, and, and we're going to do that some more. We, you know, it seems like it's the time that God wants us to do that. As we begin to seek God, oftentimes, the very first thing is He begins to reveal things that we have to repent of. Sometimes they're not our deal, 
sometimes it's in our bloodlines. Now, there's scripture, we can't go into it, we'd spend the, uh, the some time. of the other places where there is a bloodline connection. Okay, one of the greatest, you know, easiest examples that everybody can understand is the example of generational alcoholism. And you consider generational alcohol, why is it in the generations? Well, you know, people can say it's biological, there's a propensity to alcohol, there's addictive behavior. Perhaps, but part of that is also a bloodline connection. And there are other things there that we're finding out as we go into the courts, that there are things there that are in our bloodlines. And Robert tells some fascinating stories about going into the courts over himself, because he's been in the courts a bunch of times. And he goes into the courts and he starts to find out. He told the story about the, the, the false guy, the Praxis, Praxa. Remember he told that story? And how this, his ancestor had made a covenant with this false god that, whose name meant to dry up or to suck dry. And because of that unholy covenant that had never been dealt with, it allowed the accuser and the enemy to come and suck his finances dry. Now, that's different. That messes with people because, you know, many of us have been taught that everything was done on the cross. True. Everything's done on the cross. We have to execute that verdict. You and I are like the court officers to execute the verdict. The verdict has already come down, and we're going to talk about that. But we have to be, as his sons and daughters, as the ones given authority, even back in Genesis 128, when he gave dominion, a lot of times God will not move unless he has the partnership of you and I. Everybody okay? You're quiet. Maybe you're just thinking about the barbecue. Okay. <laughs> Repentance aligns us with the nature and character of God. It then allows our loving Father in that area to now bless us if the blessing has been blocked or, or stolen. The second part, when we go into the courts, is the role of intercession. Intercession, the word intercession, is standing in the gap, standing in a place of prayer before God on behalf of another person. You, because of who lives inside of you, you literally have the spirit of the living God living inside of you so that you can connect with heaven into earth through you. I love the example. We, I, we used to do it all the time. Uh, when, I had, when I was teaching science, we had a little hand generator. And you've heard me, some of you, uses, but there's a little hand generator, and if you put your fingers on the prongs, you'll get zapped. Well, my, my kids found out that if they put this finger on the prongs and this one on, remember Fred, on, on, on another kid's hand, that the electricity would go through them and zap the next kid. It was awesome. And they would make a... <laughs> That's a boy. That's a boy. They would make a, a line and see how many, maybe five or six kids. And they'd all grab hands and they'd say, who would wimp out and let go first? And so they'd start cranking the generator and you'd see all, all six of them going... Arr. In the spirit, it's something like that because of the Spirit of God inside of you connecting heaven, God the Father and the Lord Jesus who's sitting on the throne, connecting heaven with the need on earth through you. Romans 8, 27, 8, 8, 26, 87 says, we don't know how to intercede as we should, but the Spirit of God intercedes for us with groanings too deep to be uttered. So the Spirit of God inside of us becomes the intercessor through us to make things right from heaven to earth. Parameters. Mankind has given dominion according to Genesis 1.28. That has never been rescinded. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places 
when we intercede, we now align heaven with earth to give God the legal right to move on the earth. And we release heaven on earth through our prayer, declarations, proclamations, and decrees. There is a place for petitioning prayer, but there's also a place for declaring prayer, where you declare the answer. And one of the things we find in the courts is after we've done the work of repentance and applying the blood of the Lord Jesus, then we then have the legal right to declare their destiny, to declare their, all of those things that are written in their book can now be activated. Amen? The results of intercession, people and issues are aligned with God's nature, character, and plan. God's move. God moves. The verdict of heaven is enforced, and the answers come. And sometimes people who have prayed for years go into the courts, and within a matter of weeks, days, months, God does something. All right, the last one, as far as the courts, is the role of the blood of the Lord Jesus. Because the scripture says, and they overcame him, okay? Revelation 12, 10 talks about the accuser of the brethren. They overcame the accuser of the brethren because of the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their life even when faced with death. So as we do our part and repent, we say, Father, forgive me, forgive my bloodlines for whatever that might be. I am so sorry. Now we can apply the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which it says in Colossians 1.20, through him he reconciles. Reconciles means makes right all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of the cross, both things on earth and things in heaven. So the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ completely exonerates, completely makes everything right when we apply it. Our part is the repentance part. Once we've repented and we've said, God, you know, I turn to you over this issue, then we can apply the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cancel every accusation of the evil one. Jesus is the mediator. He's in heaven. We've had some of our people who are seer prophets have seen the courts of heaven and have seen as we go in there that Jesus is right there. And as we begin to go through some of these steps, they see the, the, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus being placed on the person, on the issue, and the verdict comes down, not guilty. Come on. Come on. God doesn't want us being a bunch of whipped puppy dogs. He wants us victorious. So the role of the blood... The parameters, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is represented by the pouring out of his blood, makes all things right between God and man. That's kind of one of my pictures that doesn't come out so good. The blood answers and negates every accusation of the evil one. We were over a few weeks ago in, in uh, Susan Salame's church. There were some things going on there, and we went into the courts of heaven, and I'll just give one because it, it'll be it's public knowledge. She'll be okay. But one of the things where they were having a tremendous uh, difficulty with financially, um, they had moved into a new church. The, the, it was a God thing, and yet all of a sudden finances were drying up. As we went into the courts, we the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth began to reveal certain things, and she, even though she wasn't. It wasn't her fault as the authority, as the leader, had to stand in the, the gap as an intercessor and repent. When she repented, we then applied the blood to break those accusations. And the next day, 20, 24 to 48 hours, she gets a sizable check from an unknown source that she didn't expect. Tangible results is what we're talking about. We're not talking about hypothetical things, which are good. We, we believe God for tangible results. 
And since then, uh, Wayne Anderson, Apostle Wayne Anderson's been out there. There's been tangible change even in, in the temperature of her services. Amen? So this is stuff that we can grab a hold of, <laughs> folks, and we can apply. And it doesn't take going to school. We might do some classes on it in the fall. But you can read the book. You can ask us questions. And you can begin to apply it. We can, there are times we can go into the courts with you if you feel that. One of the things Sunday night is we began to deal with the dragon. I know it sounds like, ooh. But Robert, in his book, and, and in the scripture, in this, this same pa passage around Revelation 12, talks about the dragon. The dragons represent principalities. That dragon wasn't totally, the, the dragon has been, been dealt a serious blow, but we still have some work to do with that. Everybody okay? The results, the, Jesus' blood purchased forgiveness of sin and makes us fully 100% right with God. We have full access. There is no second-rate Holy Spirit. There is no second-rate blood. There are no second-rate sons and daughters of God. That's shouting information. Yes, yes. We are fully accepted as sons and daughters with full inheritance, and the enemy of our soul has no answer for the blood. That's right. Nothing. Right. And so we're going to end the, today. We're going to celebrate that. We're going to celebrate the table of the Lord. We're going to celebrate his precious blood, body and pre precious blood if we can get ready for that. But know that this is for you. This is not something for clergy. It's something for you as blood-bought sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. As they get ready, as we get ready to take the table of the Lord, let's just pour out thankfulness in our heart to the Lord. Can we do that? You know, just, just be so thankful because this blood and this body, this sacrifice of our Lord Jesus answers every one of those things and makes us so right. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and begin to pass it out. We're going to begin to just worship, just get in that quiet place with, with you and Jesus. Kura basi tara bakando. Sira bakando basai tara bakita. Ida bakando basu tara bakita. Sura bakando. Surabaki Turabakita.
Hallelujah. Let's just stand and begin to praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessing over the bread. Lord, we just are so grateful to you for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, for what you accomplished on the cross and, and surrendering your body to be beaten. For the stripes that you took for our healing. Lord, for the things that you've done that we can take and walk in this authority that you grant us. We thank you for what you permit that we can be victorious. Kate, would you pray over the blood? Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, God. Lord, as we take this grape juice, Lord, we remember. We remember that it is by your stripes we are healed, Lord God. Yes, God. And it is your precious blood that made the way for eternal life. Yes, it is your precious blood that made the way for us to have everything that we need, Lord God. Yes, God. Father, we honor your blood. We remember your blood. Thank you. God. We thank you for that blood that you. cleanses us, yes, God. washes us clean from yes, every filthy sin. Yes, God. And we remember the sacrifice that you made. Yes. And we honor you yes. for giving us life. Yes, God. And for yours. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, passed it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. For this is my body, which is given for you. Let's take the body of the Lord together. Later, when they had supped, he took the cup, he blessed it, passed it among his disciples and said, take, drink. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which will be shed for all for the remission of sins. For as often as you do eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come again. Let's take the cup of the Lord together. Ah. 
Hallelujah. Let's just begin to celebrate him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is thank you so much for everything you've done for us we thank you so much God from A to Z from every part you have paid the price we love you Lord we thank you for the access to your throne to your courtroom to everything you have through your blood oh Lord let us go and let us be the answer let us go and be the light and the salt. Lord, commission us to go and to be light and to salt and to be salt wherever you would have us to go. Now bless each one here in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And bless the rest of their day in this time in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you would like prayer, love to pray with you, but have a blessed day.